Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of finishing this eel swim bait. This week we'll get it painted, we'll water test it, we'll get some underwater shots, and we'll go fishing with it. But first, a quick recap of what we did last week. We started off by getting the general shape and all the dimensions. Then we got it drawn out on our piece of wood with the details, and then took it to the bandsaw to be cut out. And from there, we went to the sander, and I shaped it as well as I could. Then we began to work on the details, test fitting the material for the fins, drawing, cutting out, and finally shaping the fin shapes. I decided to do a little detail carving, just something around the head and the gill plates. Then it was time to cut it into sections, get it shaped for the joints, and then do all the calculations for the weight and balance. And then finally, we dipped it to get it nicely sealed. All right, it's a new day and I've got these things off the hangers. And hopefully you can see the sheen that that uh, polyacrylic leaves on there. And the really important part is deep inside these slots. And you can see it's got a nice coating in there. It's nice and shiny. On the tail, where I had originally planned to put a hook eye right down here. I've changed my mind and I'm gonna put it back here. So I'm gonna make a little gap in the fin so I can get that twisted hook eye in there and try to get it on an angle so I can get at least an inch, an inch and a quarter of embedment in there. That's got these things glued. I just gotta wait probably, eh, I'm gonna give it like 20 minutes. In fact, I think I'm gonna stick it in my little shop oven, set it at about 100 degrees. That should help get a good hard set really quick. Right now, I wanna make a mark where the hinge screw is gonna go so it's aligned with my slots. And then using something with a good point on it, I can put a little starter hole. And I'll do it for both of the screw holes on this one. Now the way I like to set these is I'll drive them in and then set the distance it needs to be. Once I know how deep it's got to be, I'll put a little mark on it and then smear some two-part epoxy on there, drive it back into where it's supposed to be, and then we'll be ready to do a temporary assembly so that we can paint it. All right, I think that's a pretty good fit. I'll move on to the other ones. All right, that looks pretty cool. Got nice range of motion and it moves really freely. All right, when it comes to painting, the order in which you paint and assemble depends on the style of joints you're making. With this one, I like to sort of assemble it in the middle of painting. What I'll do is I'll put like the base paint job on all the parts. So this way I get paint all in the crevices and all in the carved areas and inside the joints. And I do that before I assemble it. Then I'll give it the first thin clear coat let it set, I'll assemble them completely, and then do the final paint job where I can get nice continuity all the way through the three parts. Let's get started. All right, let's start with some opaque white. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and paint it completely with this ghost brown, which is really kind of a copper color, but without the metallic look. All right, so the three parts are dry. I'm gonna go ahead and give them a good coat of polyacrylic, let that dry, and then we'll put the first clear coat on.
All right, I'm going to do the other two pieces and put them in the chamber and we'll get back to it when we're ready to assemble and start painting again. All right. They're in there. Lights are on. And we'll give it, I don't know, probably 45 minutes to get good and set and then we'll go back to painting. All right, so I took this thing out of the curing chamber. It's got one coat of clear coat on it. And now I'm pretty confident that the wood is sealed. I've got it temporarily uh, assembled here. And it's time to test our engineering skills here and see if this thing sits in the water the way I want it to. All right, I've just hung the hooks on here and let's see if it floats the way I want it to. There it is. Perfect. The whole body's in the water and it's floating nice and level. All right, I get a lot of questions about how I actually do these calculations and I try to show them as detailed as I possibly can on all the videos where I do something like this. I will give you one additional tip when you want to get that lure to float nice and level, weighting each individual part as an individual part instead of using the entire weight of the whole lure is the best way to go. Once I shove those pins in there, I won't be able to get them back out. But I'm feeling pretty comfortable that this thing has a nice movement. I know it floats well. I've got everything sealed that needs to be sealed. I'll go ahead and shove this pin the rest of the way in there. I'll shove the back one in there too. If you can, I'm not sure if you can see that little piece of tape. One on either side kind of forms a little mold. Let's go ahead and put some UV resin in there and see what happens. That side came off okay. There we go. All right, now we have a little resin gap filler and it should be easy to cover with some paint. And I didn't do this just for aesthetics. Also wanted to support that little piece of fin there so it wouldn't snap right. off. We're in the paint booth, mount it up. And what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and touch up that copper color I gave it. Alright, so first I'm going to go ahead and paint this thing on the very bottom with some ochre brown. And I'm going to highlight the, uh, the gill plates a little bit with the same color. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a golden line down the middle. And I'm going to shoot a little of the color on an extreme angle to just hit the high spots on the facial features. So now I'm going to go with this ghost tint green. It's kind of a transparent um, green. It's got a dark tint to it. All right, I'm going to try putting a little bit of a hint of little fin bones in there. Barely see it, but it looks kind of cool. Wonder if that's showing up on the camera, but it looks pretty cool. All right, so now I'm taking this little random shape stencil. It's got a bunch of sort of random perforations in it. And I've selected a, a section of it that I like, so I taped it off. And I used the part of the tape that's ripped to form the uh, sort of line that's going to be in there. This way it doesn't have any uniform straight lines. And you end up with just sort of a subtle pattern that gives it uh, kind of a more of a natural look. I'm going to put a little bit of red on the chin just for tradition's sake and put the eyes on. So what do you think? Red? Silver? Or gold? Man, I'm torn between silver and gold. I think I'm going to go with silver. I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple of coats of polyacrylic uh, for the mid coat to see all this stuff. And then I'll give it a couple of hours to set and we'll go ahead and clear coat it. And we'll be ready to take this thing down to the water. All right, I guess I'll go tend the bonfire and get back to this when it's ready to be clear coated. All 
I like to heat the surface of the lure with a blow dryer and I'll get that surface pretty warm and what happens is the resin will flow a lot smoother and hold a lot fewer bubbles. It really flows a lot better and you can feel it doesn't stick to the surface. It kind of just wants to flow. Now clear coating it when it's all assembled like this is pretty awkward. I really don't like doing this. And the only reason I did this is because I wanted to fill those little gaps in the fin just to cover them up and to make them a little stronger. But typically I'll give all the separate parts a couple of good clear coats and then I'll put it together. It's so easy to miss spots on a lure this size. You really need to give it a lot of looks from a lot of different angles to make sure you're getting every little bit. All right, let's see if I can get this thing to fit in here. And I'll probably let this thing go for a few hours because it's so long I don't have it really close to the bulbs. So it'll take a little longer. And then we'll get out on the water, get some underwater shots, and hopefully do a little casting around and see if we can scare up a bite. And here in Florida, it, it really kills the bite when it's this cold, but we'll give it a shot. All right, we're out here at the reservoir. Coming through the stump field is absolutely treacherous. I probably bumped like five or six uh, big stumps and it just jerks the boat all over the place. You gotta go super slow. Here she is. I really like the way it came out. I think the details are super nice and the range of motion is perfect. I haven't cast it yet. And as always, I'll put a slideshow at the very end so you can get a closer look at the details and the finish of the lure. All right, let's see what it looks like. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> it's got a really heavy movement side to side and the whole body moves. Let's try getting a little bit of a faster retrieve just to see how it does. Very stable. Really cool. All right. All right, let's do a little bit of a little twitch and pause retrieve since it's a top water lure. It turns all the way around. Yeah, it, it'll turn 180 degrees. All right, let's try to get some underwater shots. I got some good shots. Really windy and I found this tiny little cove here where the wind is just a little quieter. Hopefully I got some good stuff in the can. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take my word for it. All right, enough of that, let's fish. I hooked one and he's gotten around a log, I think. And I can't get him out. Come on, man. It's a fish, man. He jumped. There he is. All right. <laughs> there it is. Yes. Wrapped around that log. <laughs> look at that that's got to be a four pounder <laughs> look at that i can't believe it Whew. let's get a weight on this guy all right let's get a release on this All right, well, we've got proof of concept. I'm surprised I caught anything 
water's really cold and I had to slow way down and that thing hit just as I pulled it and the head went underwater. I got a big swirl and he was on, but there's so many logs. That thing just wrapped around. I could feel it rubbing against the logs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use that weight as another contest. And when we hit 30,000 subscribers, we'll do a giveaway the way we've done a couple of times before. We have to guess the weight of that fish, but I'll let you know when we start that. Don't start sending guesses now. All right, guys, if you're enjoying these kinds of videos, give me a thumbs up, it really helps. Share these videos with your friends. Keep those lure ideas coming. I actually like a couple of them and I'll probably do a couple of them. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next Friday.